Kids Live. I'm Heather Thompson, your Family Ministries Director. Moms and dads, each week we invite your kids to participate in the classroom liturgy. Now it looks a little different when you're at home, but we want you to know that your kid is invited to listen to God's Word every week. We use the Gospel Project to teach the Gospel to your kids, so encourage them to stay engaged throughout the week. Ask them questions, and moms, dads, listen to the lesson too, so you know how to talk to your kids. Up next, we've got Haley Bowden, your preschool director, with today's lesson. Hello, and welcome back to Paradox Kids Live. I am so glad to be with you on another Sunday where God has gathered His people so that we get to worship Him in response to how much He loves us. We've been learning about our big picture question about sin, but today we have a new one, and it talks about how to glorify God. So our new big picture question is, how do we glorify God? And I'm going to teach you the answer, and I have some hand motions to go with it. So the question is, how do we glorify God? And the answer is, we glorify God by loving Him and obeying Him. Do you know what it means to glorify something? To glorify something is to praise and worship something. So we can glorify God. We can praise and worship Him by loving Him and obeying His commands. So just like we've been learning, sin is turning away from God and obeying God is turning to him to listen to his word and understand what he has for us and to say yes to him and what he has asked us to do. Now it's time to play our favorite game that we have played for so many weeks now. And I think that your dance moves just keep getting better and better and better. So today we have a special version of Freeze Dance. Do you remember the rules? When the music's playing, we're dancing, and then when it stops, we stop. Are you ready? Let's play. Wow, we just had the most friends we've ever had join us for freeze dance, and that was the most fun dance party yet. I hope you had fun dancing with us, and now you can stay on your feet because it's time to sing to God. We get to sing to God in response to how good He is to us and how much He loves us. Today we'll be singing a song called Doxology. Son and Holy Ghost 
we've sung to God, it's time to listen to God's word. Before we read our story for today, I want to introduce to you our new key passage. So last unit, it was Proverbs 3, verse 5. And this week, we're starting with a new key passage found in the book of Deuteronomy. Do you know where Deuteronomy is in the Bible? That's a really big word, and it's kind of hard to say, but it's at the very beginning of the Bible. So if you'll grab your Bible and turn to Deuteronomy chapter 31, we're going to read verse 8 together. Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 8 says this. It is the Lord who goes before you. He will be with you. He will not leave you or forsake you. Do not fear or be dismayed. That's our key passage for this unit. And today we're going to keep learning about how the Lord goes before his people. So our story is from a book called Joshua, and that's also at the beginning of the Bible. And the beginning of the Bible is where we learn about God's people, the Israelites. So this story is called Crossing the Jordan, and it's from Joshua chapters 1 through 4. Joshua was the new leader of Israel. He had led the Israelites to the edge of the Jordan River. The river was deep and it was wide. The Israelites needed help crossing the river. God was going to help them. God gave Joshua and the other leaders special instructions for crossing the river. Some of the men carried the ark of God ahead of the people. The ark reminded them that God was with them. The men carrying the ark walked to the edge of the river. Joshua said, listen, God is going to do something great. When these men carry the ark of God into the river, God will stop the water in the river. That's crazy. God was going to stop the moving water in the river. The men carrying the ark took a step into the river and then God made the water stop. So all of the Israelites crossed the river safely on dry ground. God told Joshua, tell the people to pick up 12 stones from the middle of the river where the men are standing with the ark. They should carry the stones with them and put them down where they spend the night tonight. God had a plan for the stones. He wanted them to be a memorial. A memorial is something that helps people remember a person or something that has happened. The people would see the stones and remember that God helped them cross the river. In the future, when children saw the stones and said, what are these stones? The people could tell their children that God stopped the water so that they could cross the river. The Israelites did exactly what God told them to do. They picked up 12 stones and they made a memorial to remember what God did for them. The men with the ark crossed the river and the water began to flow again. The river was wide and deep like it was before. At last, God's people had made it to the promised land. God was with Joshua and the Israelites as they went into the promised land. He showed his power to them so that they would trust him. When Jesus came to earth, he showed his power so people would trust in him and be saved from sin. That is such a great story about how God always goes with us and he goes before us and his presence never leaves us. Before we leave today, I want to recap what we've learned and we can practice our question one more time. So today we learned that Joshua led the Israelites across the river on a dry land. They were obedient to God and he made a way for them. The Israelites made a memorial on the other side of the river to remember all that God did for them. They loved God and they were obedient to him and God was glorified in this story. Big City, here's a question for you to think about and talk to your parents about this week. What is something that God has done for you that you want to remember? How could you make something to remember that? Also, another question, why is it important to tell others about God? Let's remember our big picture question one last time before we leave, and we can practice it together. So remember, our new question is, how do we glorify God? And we glorify God by loving him and obeying him. I loved getting to worship with y'all again, and I can't wait to see y'all. I miss y'all, and I'll see you next week. Bye, guys.